I would like to say that I can't be a singular expression of myself. There's too many parts, too many spaces, too many manifestations, too many lines, too many curves, too many valleys, too many journeys, too many mountains, too many rivers, too many. Through the mediums of music, painting, spoken word poetry, and digital assemblage, Solange, Wadsworth Durrell, George the Poet, and Juliana Huxtable construct Black creative practices as being tools within a self-made laboratory for Black world building. In her song, Can I Get the Mic?, Solange's voice rises out of a cacophony of voices, all vying for the microphone, to assert that her being cannot be limited to a discrete position, space, geography, form, or state of being. As she speaks, an instrumental behind her voice becomes increasingly fast and loud, sounding out the multiplicities that Solange herself encompasses. In turn, Wadsworth Durrell's acrylic and mixed media on canvas work, Revolutionary, initiates a cross-temporal conversation, allowing a 1972 painting to articulate Solange's 2019 song. While 2019 may react to 1972, the past may also respond to the present, reinventing histories across a non-linear landscape her body, linking her verbal and textual statements with her subject position, allowing them to articulate her subjectivity. By reading and making meaning from her words in the present, the viewer enacts a sociocultural legalization of Davis's messages, rooting her words in a transformative relevance. Jarrell's composition inscribes Davis's legacy within Black liberation struggles across time and place, her words emerging from her being, while also taking on a life of their own. As her theoretical and rhetorical production radiates out of her figure and into space, they come to define her surroundings, her words literally serving as building blocks for the world around her. For example, the Oba, as he was called, hosted European subjects who were utterly enthralled by the organization of Benin society. No inner rivalry or impropriety. He controlled trade from the upper echelons right back down to the village, thus monopolizing security and favors. The smaller figures in the background of the image are European traders. I remember those guys. In the Benin Bronze and its accompanying video, spoken word poet George the Poet composed an assemblage of temporalities, centering upon an encounter between George the Poet and the Benin Bronze. Using the pronoun I, George the Poet positions himself as the Oba of Benin, constructing himself as royalty, as well as asserting that the systems of imperial white supremacist domination that spurred the theft of the bronzes are maintained in a contemporary time. Anyway. Back to me. Back to me. Oba and his officials are in the foreground, as you can see, to convey their dominance of the relationship, because they were commonly accommodating trading ships that were often laden with brass from European nations before all the invasions. The people of Benin made art with the brass, and all of the images charted the past. That's why every single scene covers kings and queen mothers. Invoking generational memory, the poet constructs the kingdom of Benin as holding immense political and cultural power, himself laying claim to their legacy. By personifying the bronzes, the poet engages the agency of the objects, linking their theft with the domination of the human beings that created them, and orienting the bronzes themselves as subjects that hold power in both past and present. The British response was a thousand marines. All I remember was the sounds of the screams as they raided our city raped and pillaged the indigenous people of the ancient village. I can't erase the image. I can't erase the image. They circled around as our civilization was burned to the ground. And what was once the royal decor had now become the spoils of war. Finally, in describing the formal qualities of the bronzes, the poet constructs them as beautiful art objects, breaking down hegemonic ideals and dissolving the colonial binary of objects of art versus those of anthropological study. In performing the poem at the British Museum, gazing up at the bronzes, George the Poet charges the British Museum as guilty in the theft of the Benin bronzes, a theft justified and maintained by legal frameworks that construct the bronzes as property of the museum. Juliana Huxtable, widely known as both a visual artist and a DJ, too centers her creative expression in the collaging of the visual and the sonic. In Untitled, Psychosocial Stunton, the purples, blues, and pinks of Huxtable's composition construct a space seemingly beyond that of a material world. Huxwell's body fills the frame, her purple skin and hair making her appear supernatural and superhuman, wholly upending notions of bioessentialism and biological determinism. Hovering over a water-like mass, Huxwell's image gestures towards religious iconography, coding her as a godly figure. Different textures fill the background, and the horizon is seemingly endless, the scene reaching far beyond the frame, entering the space of the viewer. As Huxwell's gaze meets that of the viewer, she is positioned as the active subject in a new plane of possibility daring the audience to situate itself in her newly constructed world. As her clothing reflects military garb, 
Her outfit simultaneously marks her as a warrior, possessing immense strength and resilience, yet operates wholly outside of the military-industrial complex, which views life as currency and relies on the, manip on the manipulation and murder of the lives of people of color and furthering its imperial conquests, as al also referenced by George the Poet. Instead, the work breathes new life into geographies of space and of the imagination. Together, Solange, Jarrell, George the Poet, and Huxtable construct new temporal and spatial geographies, employing the visual and the sonic to upend legal frameworks that attempt to limit how black bodies can exist and move in space and time. Within the laboratories of imagination these artists have created, these laws are disintegrated, allowing artists, viewers, and listeners to concoct new liberatory formulas for their new worlds.